Hello community! Hello community! <laughs> this is the May 21 update video and we have a bunch of topics to cover today and we hope you will enjoy this little update. Yep, so I would say without further ado, let's start. As a first topic, we show this game we received from RGCD and uh, it's a C64 game but it has been tested to work on the Mega 65 and it comes with nice goodies like stickers and buttons and it's a cartridge game so yeah Anton please it's very stiff <laughs> yep. so yeah let's hear it RGCD present a Pirates of Zanzibar production Skills, synthesized sounds. Yes. I love it. <laughs> a lot of speech in that game. Yeah. Nice music too, and it's uh, again, it's a pet ski game. It only uses the pet ski char set, and yeah, it looks nice and works very well on the Mega. Mojo. Round one. Fight. Actually, really hard. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy game. So yeah, whenever you guys plan to release something as an actual cartridge or disc release or whatever, you can send it to us, and uh, of course we will test it, and if possible we will help you getting it to work on the Mega 65. You've been asking for it, the shirts, we proudly present them every time. So there's the first shop for Mega 65 goodies now. Um, Soran made it, it's in Hungary. Hungary, exactly. And um, he started shipping uh, stuff like t-shirts, these bags, mouse pads, the nice cups uh, to everywhere in Europe, I think. Exactly. Um, he's working uh, on getting it further I into the United States, etc. I think the last thing I've heard from Zoran is he managed it with the postage to United States, but he said certain car countries are more expensive. Yeah. So I really would suggest to all of you, if you know people in our community who are from the same country, get in contact with them and ask them a bulk order will probably be cheaper for postal and packaging for certain so everybody should be able to get the goods and like I said the t-shirt quality is amazing it's, I love it and the same with the cup it's in constant use already so yes. <laughs> very well done yeah. absolutely absolutely we are also in speech with other people who probably will support us like um, Tef said Zoran is one of the first bigger shops now that actually is merchandise, Mega 65 article stuff. So you will find the, you find the link to the shop here and of course it's linked from Mega 65 org. Um, also the other shop that's offering these nice keychains is linked from Mega 65 org and there's one small thing, maybe keep this in mind. If you think about placing an order, Zoran is having a discount. You get either 15% if you order the whole package of Mega65 goodies, or you get 10% using the voucher code Mega65 on single articles. You can't combine both, but it's still a nice offer and it lasts until end of May. Yeah, Dev, um, you brought us something um, over here today. I'm amazed again. Please tell us a little bit. Yes, that's the famous Mister. It's an FPGA computer like ours. Uh, it looks a bit different, um, but it has a really nice community that's actually really helpful to us. And uh, they have developed quite a lot of nice FPGA cores for that thing. So. All the famous home computers, a lot of game consoles are already there and work very well from the Amiga to Atari ST um, to the C64 for people that really want to be 100% compatible. 
um, and not enjoy the the C65 Mega 65s. Quick, quick, quick question. Yes. The Mr. Project is open source as well. Yes, right? it's open source, and the guys are great. They are doing is this for a couple of years now, and uh, we keep constantly porting those cores uh, to the Mega 65, so uh, you can enjoy what you have here uh, in combination with the floppy and the keyboard and the nice case. Um, uh, I also can say our FPGA is a bit stronger because it's just uh, newer. So um, yeah, we are constantly porting those cores. Um, again, this is a very nice machine. Uh, Sci 2002 has just updated the Game Boy Color Core. Uh, it's now more compatible and it uh, more games, if not all of them, uh, run. Yeah. So I just changed the SD card and. Now we have to get an update of the Game Boy Core. For that case, I think they have a quite nice demo. Let's go for this one. And like I said, now it supports all uh, Game Boy ROMs up to one megabyte in size. Bigger ones hopefully will be updated shortly. Yeah, and... Uh... Zelda runs and all the, the goodies that you want to enjoy. <laughs> exactly. Again, and on a big screen, uh, they all run now. And it's a good thing also what I like with porting these over. Once you have this core flashed in, in example, it's really that machine that it re uh, reflect, uh, reflects. In example, if I go ahead now, I just interrupt this demo for a second, have a look. And you're still in the core, and you can go directly ahead and say, let's go for another one. Maybe it's show a Zelda. Yeah, let's go for a game. Japanese version. Yeah, <laughs> Japanese version. I have just, just a collection I had at home. And you can see it takes you from directly. And once the ROM's mounted, here you go. I'm totally amazed with the latest update. Yes, so whenever you don't want to play Mega 65 on your Mega 65, <laughs> you can enjoy other cores. Um, so there's uh, a lot to do with the machine in the future. Hopefully Amiga and Atari ST and things like that will be ported. So yeah, yeah stay but tuned. For the time being, ZX Uno. Game Boy, Game Boy Color is, is absolutely amazing. Camera burst. Ah yeah, one nice thing with this Game Boy Color now also, it fully supports joystick and you even can go ahead, since our C60 um, 4 joystick only has one button, while the Game Boy only had two, in our setup menu that you can call up by pressing the help button, you actually can define if you want to have the fire button as a fire button or an example up is button A on the Game Boy, fire is B, up is B, fire is A. So you really can go ahead and really set this. Also you could simulate the LCD. And joystick support is working nicely. If I only could reach Japanese. Regarding Mega 65 software, um, yeah, we enjoy more and more games coming out. We enjoy the games, and uh, um, Shellen 50K has uh, on his Twitch stream started porting one of his games, Luma, uh, to the Mega 65, and um, it has been enhanced, better graphics, more colors, and it's a really nice game. Uh, maybe Anton can show it to us because I'm not very good at it. It's a very tricky game. <laughs> yeah, I think what um, Shellen tries to achieve is porting the game to the Mega 65 mode so that you could easily, first thing, it runs like it was running on the C64, but he gives, this gives us a possibility to enhance the game, graphics yes. and so on. 
exactly. And he wants to show how easy it is to enhance your original C64 game, to have more colors, maybe stereo sit and stuff like that. And um, he does that live on his channel and so it's quite uh, interesting watch if you find the time to uh, tune in then I w we would advise to, to look at what he's doing. So maybe Anton show us how the game works. Yeah. I think you Luma, have to Luma is a brilliant game he actually made and he went ahead. It's a puzzle game and quite addictive to be honest. So you have to power the lasers with a battery and the laser beam has to go into the target, right? Yep, exactly. So, so the first one is easy, <laughs> but then... In principle it consists always of three components. The battery, the laser itself and the reception device. Later on there will be mirrors in as well that you already can see and you have to make them. Um, you have to place them on your game field that you get a proper connection. It also tells you how many times you are allowed to move. In example this one we allow two times. This is still a quite easy level. This is one. But what I absolutely like, what you already can see, is the amount of colors that he enhanced. Yes, More color shades colorful. and so on. So it's minor changes, but absolutely nice. Very nice uh, original Mega 65 game. It's getting more and more tricky. Exactly. <laughs> I think this has really a lot of levels. Yeah. Like more than 100, like, I, I don't know, 200 levels or something. I think at the moment I stuck at level 13, 14, something like this. I would need. The nice thing is you get passcode, so you just write down the passcode and continue later on. I didn't wrote down the passcode this time. So this is a nice example and uh, he also just uh, ported another game. I think someone yep. sent him a source code, maybe you can load that. Yep. And uh, it's uh, called Toxic Frenzy, I think. Um, he received the source code for the C64 game and actually the game mimics an old school LCD game like this Game & Watch. This is not the original Game & Watch, this is a, a newer version, keychain version, licensed by Nintendo, but uh, it's in, in principle the same game. You have to collect oil drops and um, yeah, and he did the same to that game. He enhanced it, uh, put in more colors and uh, yeah, did a Mega 65 version of the original C64 game. And yeah, please. I think he did this during his last two streams and it was a little bit more tricky since it was his own code from what I've seen in the stream. But the result is absolutely amazing again. It's so still uh, just a few hours to port it, I e mean. Exactly, yeah. I think he did it in two sessions. Yeah, he so completely ported it. It also has nice music. Good. So Anton has to collect the drops and then <laughs> get rid of the full uh, bucket and yeah. uh, put it somewhere below. It's a nice little game. Yep, it's effective <laughs> and makes a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't <laughs> spill the toxic over the two people down. It really <laughs> looks like one of these old LCD games like you just showed over here. It's of course better graphics and everything. I like the music. Yeah, and it's great to see how Sharon is working with these games, how he improves them and so yes. on. I think he wrote a lot of code routines already where he tries to go ahead and um, provide the community with a library of routines that makes it easier for the community to port games and bring them over to the Mega 65. Also he's constantly doing those competitions and giving away Nexus boards um, to the, the winners of the competitions. So he just had a 
a little assembly game demo, I think. You right. had to code in assembler, a uh, Mega 65 game. Exactly. And uh, quite a nice uh, games came out of the, out of it. And uh, you can yep. download them at the file host, which brings you yep. or us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> brings us to the next topic. Yep. Well, maybe you want to start uh, about the file host. Okay. Um, yeah, the file host also received uh, some nice updates lately. Um, if you hop over and have a look, you will see that we have a nice introduction page now where you see... Yep, you yes, are here. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> link is below. <laughs> and at the file host you will see, once you go to the web page, see uh, latest files, see top downloaded files. Also, we implemented pictures now, so you have a nice preview of what you're downloading and so on. And it's, it's amazing. So you see the amount of files is inc uh, incrementing constantly. And also Sharon's latest results of the assembler coding contest, you're gonna find them over there as well. And I only can suggest go over there. It's, <coughs> From Shellen, Kalle Kloaki, one of my favorite <laughs> games. It, it's amazing with what kind of ideas the community is coming up. It's absolutely cool. So uh, maybe some, a word to the file host. Uh, Tiger is coding that all from scratch. So um, I think you already see there's a, a score um, that will come soon. Right. So people can uh, vote which... Uh, how, Exactly. If they like the the files or not, and yeah. you can uh, download the highest voted soon. But again, he's doing everything from scratch, coding it up from zero. So it just takes a little bit of time. He did not take any software that's already available on the internet. And uh, yeah, taking this in account, I think it's a very great achievement already. Absolutely, and I think a file host is only as good as the files that are on it. And yes. this is something we can say, yes, our file host is getting bigger and bigger, more and more files. Also, that's something where, take a little bit of it, thanks to BitShifter, our ROM section, we mentioned this already a, a while ago, and um, if you browse through the, uh, just through the ROM download section, if you are a developer, then you will see the whole history of all Commodore ROMs up to the most recent ones, one more reason to go over there. So it's absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, the file house we're talking about is uh, still only accessible from your modern computer. Um, we're working to make it accessible from the Mega 65 in the future, but there's great news. We have something which you can access on the interwebs with your Mega 65 already. And yes, it's classic BBS and uh, the, the LAN uh, port is starting to work and maybe Anton can show us um, how, to, yes, <laughs> to, how to rip out the cable and put it back in and then access some nice BBS. To, to show you, no <laughs> trips, nothing. That's really an Ethernet cable that we connected now to our Mega 65. Yeah, and it's not, the BBS is not running locally, but it's uh, even in, in, in another country. And uh, yeah, let's see. And this is, of course, a, a great breakthrough that uh, Mega 65s can uh, already. Uh, be connected over the internet and there's more to come of course but uh, yeah this is really enjoyable already so <laughs> yeah the, the, the terminal software is not called pet term yeah <laughs> but it's, instead it's called haustier begriff <laughs> yeah, exactly. which is the same in German and uh, another funny joke from Paul so let's see it and it comes with uh, already a, a list of uh, BBSs compiled into it. Yeah, maybe take try the boss head. Try we try the boss head. Correct it. You got a line. Ah, there's nice pen scheme mm. coming up already. So <laughs> yeah, you can leave messages and uh, you can talk to people. And it's, uh, I think the community knows how um, the BBS how to operate them. But what we wanted to show you is a proof of concept where we can say, yes, our um, Ethernet port is working now. We are able to connect to the BBS. So from there on, 
I think that was quite good when you mentioned it. So in principle, really we're coming to a point where sooner or later the Mega 65 will be able to access our file host. Okay, that's future music yes, at the moment. It's planned from the beginning and uh, also I think it uh, gives a lot of more possibilities to run Petsky-based BBSs uh, in the future. But of course all this has to be coded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's uh, a lot to do. And, uh, but the foundation is in. Yes. So with the internet phones working, we can show it. Yes, it's working nicely. So okay. you, yep. have, you would have to choose a new LIS. Exactly, or just log in. But it's amazing to see that the Ethernet port now is also yes. functional. I yes. love it. It's very nice. So we have a premiere, but this time we have a guest part, um, Stefan Kleinert, which uh, is a person well known in the C65 scene. Mm -hmm. um, uh, his nickname is Ubik. He had a, a, a C65 in the past, and uh, yeah, we managed to get him on board. And he's uh, doing great things together with Bitshifter. He's testing the basic a lot. He's a, a guy who's he really stressing the basic 10, I think. So. Um, to enhance it and to to uh, be able to work more with his dev kit and use the great keyboard more, he did a um, basic development environment, which is not called basic 10 or basic 11, it's just called 11. Yeah. And uh, he will show it to us what is what it is and what is it is doing right now here in our first guest video post in the update video. My name is Stefan. And I've been invited to talk a little bit about 11. So what's 11? 11 is a kind of integrated development environment for the Mega 65 running on the actual Mega 65, not on your PC or it's not, not a cross assembler or cross compiler or something like that, but it's, it's running on the real machine. So what I'd like to do is just giving you a little demonstration of 11 and its features by actually using 11. So let's put this up here. So what we're seeing here is the EE, the 11 editor. Per default, it starts up with a readme file. So that's what we're seeing here. So the editor has all the stuff you normally expect from an editor. For example, you can insert some text or delete your text again. But it also has a few other tricks up its sleeve such as jumping to labels. You can uh, mark labels with a dot at the beginning of the line and then auto jump to that location by pressing the F7 key. This comes in very handy when developing programs because you immediately see the part of your code that you're jumping to. So to demonstrate that a little more, let's load some real source code for a real 11 enabled program. This here is Hopalong, which displays a neat little fractal. And as you can see, that's not your run-of-the-mill Commodore BASIC program, but it's got some features that are unfortunately still missing in BASIC 65, such as long variable names. To use a variable like this, you have to declare it first. After that, you can use it in your program, and it's a unique name. So even if you declare a variable called very bad afterwards, that would be a completely different thing. Another thing you can now have is named labels. In this case, I'm using the editor's jump to label feature, which you might remember from the readme file, to jump directly to the label. Named labels are defined by the dot prefix. Just type dot followed by an identifier and you have to find a label which you can use instead of a line number. Once you're finished coding, you can simply press the F5 key from inside the editor to fire up the precompiler. The precompiler then translates your beautiful 11 program into a plain old, boring, incomprehensible and unstructured Commodore basic program, which it then launches. At this point, it's important to stress that programs generated by 11 don't need 11 to run. They are, in fact, perfectly normal Commodore basic programs, which you can load and run. So that concludes our little tour of 11. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want, give it a try. Let me know how you like it. And uh, see you sometime. Bye.
So thank you, Stefan. This was a great, <laughs> yeah, great part. <laughs> it's a very nice. So another great addition is the mouster from Retro Hex, and uh, it's a very small device, as you can see, that will enable you to um, use your modern laser, whatever mouse, USB mouse, uh, together with several home computers, including the Mega 65. So you can simulate the original Commodore mouse. The 1361. Exactly. The Amiga mouse, if you want that. And uh, yes, and uh, just plug in with a little adapter your USB mouse and use it with a Mega 65 in the BIOS with the games like Solitaire, yeah. etc. It's a really great thing. Um, yours, you just said yours came pre configured, so the Thanks. guys obviously noticed uh, what you want to use it for. If it's not coming pre configured, uh, RetroComps did a great video. Uh, which is also linked from Mega65.org in the video section of Friends video section yeah. and uh, how to configure it to work with the Mega65. This is a great addition. I think normally uh, it's a problem most people had. When I started I was looking for 1351 and if you uh, search online on various platforms you will see the absolute crazy prices people want to have for 1351. So the guys from the master team came up with the idea and thought, okay, we need a modern solution, which is also not only getting rid of the ball, but be able to use a normal laser pointer mouse. That's how they came up with this idea. So maybe the final thing to show is if you don't have enough from us already, um, there's been a great article, I think it's nine pages in the Scrolly magazine, which is uh, about demo scene and retro computers. It's a Finnish magazine, but um, they really did a great job, great photos, great articles. So as far as we could understand what it's saying. And there also is a, the Retro Hour podcast where Paul gave an interview. It's about yeah. one hour, I think. Yeah, about, and he, yeah. he covered all the things, the whole history of the Mega 65. Uh, of the guys involved coming together and the, yeah. how the happening. project came alive yeah, exactly. and everything exactly yes and uh, yeah maybe one last thing to say is because uh, the m most comments are when will it be available when can I fan finally buy it um, we uh, always answer the same thing when it's done no <laughs> we will go a little bit further and we answer the the pre-orders uh, will start this year so in 2021 um, late summer maybe autumn pre-orders will start uh, there will be a first batch um, of around 400 pieces which we are hoping to ship by the end of the year. You know the actual situation is very complicated with all things hardware, including plastic. Every resources are very hard to get. So it might get spring 22, but we are aiming for the end of this year. So with a lot of luck, uh, the first 400 pieces will be under the Christmas trees of their future owners. And um, yeah, we've ordered a lot of more stuff to cover uh, the bigger uh, yeah. needs in 22. We ordered a very uh, big number of keyboards and cases. So there will be, by the end of the year, ongoing uh, supply of Mega 65 computers. A lot is going on in the background at the moment. And I really got to say, I got shivers <laughs> down my spine if I think about it. Because if we manage to get the first Megas out, or let's say, let's even just the pre-order start, we will be exactly 30 years after Commodore had to wrap the project up. And I think this is astonishing. That's you know? the oh. idea behind it, yes. And we're working towards this. So don't worry, all will be good, hopefully this year. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching and uh, yeah, see you in the next update video. And meanwhile, a lot of things are, is going on on Discord. Watch challenge streams, visit the Philos. Everything is linked from Mega65.org. So when yeah. you start there, you will find everything. You find the shops and uh, all the, the plays, lists, the videos, everything. Yeah. Um, if you love coding on the 6510 for the C64, Go to Shannon's stream, 
he shows you how where the differences are from the 6510 to the 4510. Yes. And it's, uh, go ahead, have a look. And you can even win a development board by doing so. so Ex exactly. <laughs> nothing can go wrong. <laughs> exactly. Okay. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.